from his earliest history, man has sought to please himself rather than God. A voice within him has whispered again and again, be free, live as you please, do as you want. And so, responding to the restless longings of his heart, he has ignored God's will for his life and taken matters in his own hands. some work on his fence. How about give me a hand? I'm through fixing things around here. What's got into you, Steve? You figure Dad and I can do everything, huh? Spring, you and Dad can do anything you want. I'm pulling out. Pulling out? Yeah, I'm pulling out. I'm sick and tired of working myself to death. Same dirty job day in and day out. And for what? Where's it getting any of us? I know where it's getting me. Right out of here. If you want to stick around and rot, that's your business. Listen to me. All right, just once more around and then into the roundhouse with it. You'd better turn it off, dear. It's getting late. All right, Mom. Done. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Emily, if you'll do the honors, we'll go on. Come along, Sonny. Now. 
folks were asking for you at church. Wondering if you were sick or something. I am. I'm plenty sick. I'm sick of everything around here. I'm sick of being ordered around like a flunky. And I'm fed up with religion for breakfast, dinner, and supper. And I'm sick of going to church. In fact, I'm fed up with the whole mess. I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised. When I was your age, I felt that way lots of times. Why don't you take a few days off? It's not going to be for a few days. I'm going for good. Can't figure you, Steve. Why were the three of us partners? Nobody's a flunky. We're all working for ourselves. I don't see it that way. I want out. But the ranch needs you. It's too much for Don and me alone. A hired man can take care of everything I do around here. I want to sell my share. And if old man Henderson still wants the north pasture, that'll do it. Oh, look, don't you see, Dad? I, I want to live my own life. I, I want to make my own decisions. I just want to be free. Nobody likes freedom better than I do, son. And when it comes to making decisions, I guess every man's got that right. But you got the wrong slant, Steve. You're all bitter inside. It's no use, Dad. I've made up my mind. Steve! Call Henderson this evening. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Come on, you gotta get down now. Now, mind you. Take good care of things around here, Timmy. You gonna be gone long? Well, it's hard to say. So long, old timer. Bye, Uncle Steve. Take good care of him, Emmy. Uh, you better put this in a bank as soon as you get into town. I will, Dad, the first thing. Remember, there's always a place waiting here for you. Whenever you feel like coming home. I remember, Dad. I don't forget to write as soon as you get settled. Bye. Take care of yourself. behind him, Steve reached the big city ready to enjoy his freedom. No longer would he have to be a flunky. Now he could make his own decisions. Now he could live his own life. Clint. There you are, sir. Swell. Uh, anything else? No, this is fine, thanks. Uh, any ice water or... Uh... Oh, no, thanks. Thank you. If you need anything at all, just call for number 14. I know my way around. I'll bet you do. Oh, uh, and incidentally, I can tip you off to a good horse in the fifth race at Belmont. Oh, no thanks. Well, well I know this town pretty well, and if there's anything you want, you just call for number 14. Uh, swell. <laughs> Well, 
that be all, sir? That'll be it. There you are, Betty. Thank you, sir. Yeah, this is Steve Caldwell. Barney Albright, well, you old son of a gun. Say, I phoned you earlier, but they said you were still sleeping. What do you do, work nights? Brother, you call that work? No, I have any definite plans, except to live it up a little and have some fun. Tomorrow night? Sure, I'm free. Hey, that'll be swell, round eight. I'll be there. See you, Barney. Hey, how's it going, Steve? Living it up, boy, living it up. Better boy. Yeah, we're having the time of our life, aren't we? Good. Well, why don't you two dance a little bit, huh? Oh, no, we're, we're getting along fine, right here. Well, if uh, you need me for anything, uh, let me know, will you? You bet. <laughs> Have you known Barney Long, Steve? Mm-hmm. We're old school buddies. Yeah, he was the best shortstop the team ever had. You probably weren't so bad yourself. Nothing like Barney. He could have turned pro if he wanted to. What makes you think he isn't? Lucky day for me when I met Barney. He's introduced me to all kinds of important people. He's in Bermuda now, and I've subleased his apartment. Never a dull moment. Things are jumping night and day. I never seem to quite catch up with everything that's going on. Well, doesn't look like he's lonesome, would you say, Emily? No, well, I guess not. Not with all the goings-on he tells us about. Well, for all we know, it may be the wisdom of the Almighty that's opened up this new life for him. Yes, a brand new life had opened up for Steve, all right. Here were gay friends, fast company, and no restraints. Here was music, laughter, romance, and excitement. Here was a glamorous world he had never known before. To Steve, this was living. stretched into months, home had become something to be forgotten. After a while, there was no time, nor even the inclination to read letters from home, let alone write to the one who anxiously waited in vain for news of his beloved son. Inevitably, the day of reckoning was coming closer and closer. And while the bills were running high, the cash was dwindling low. Soon his money was gone, and only bills he could not pay remained. Even his fair-weather friends had deserted him, no doubt to see greener pastures. Yes, for the first time he realized that his freedom had been bought dearly. Don? Hmm? How do you like it? Mm-hmm. Can't you take your nose out of that almanac long enough to help me decide? You're going to have a plum out of shape before you get a chance to even wear it. Well, most men would take a minute to admire the first new hat their wife's had in a whole year. Honey, I've told you a dozen times you're going to have the prettiest bonnet in church Easter morning. Is Dad still outside? Yes. Mailman's due any minute. I think you would have given up after all this time. He'll never give up. You know that. No, but I can see what it's doing to him. I can see what it's doing to you. Trying to run the whole ranch by yourself. Oh, I'll make out all right, but Dad's too old for this sort of thing. I, 
I can see it in his eyes. He's sick inside from not knowing or hearing from Steve. He's killing Dad. Just as if he had his hands around his throat. And so, having wasted his life and money on riotous living, Steve, now penniless and friendless, began to drift aimlessly along the road to oblivion. Sick of body and soul, ashamed to go back home, it wasn't long before he was seeking any kind of a job from which to eke out an existence. His pride and spirit gone, he went from one lowly job to another, living precariously from one day to the next, until he found himself ready to take the very kind of work he had so despised at home. Barbecuing a beef, and all the neighbors are coming. Steve, he came back here? After what he did, you mean to say Dad's willing to take him back? Of course. Wouldn't you? I'll be hanged if I would. Daddy, will you play trains with me? 
Not now, son. I'm busy. Daddy, when I grow up, will I go away on a real train like Uncle Steve did? I don't know, son. I, I hope not. You better run along. What does Steve want around here, anyway? More money? Has he been whining to Dad to sell another piece of land so he can go off and start his soft living again? Don, you don't understand. Steve has accepted Christ as his personal savior. How do you know? Because I've talked to him. He told me. I believe him. Don, if Christ can forgive him after all he's done, shouldn't we? You'll be coming soon, Don. Uh, you better get dressed. I reckon this all came as a sort of surprise to you. You think it shouldn't? Why all this fuss over somebody who left you in the lurch? So you think I shouldn't be surprised, huh? Me, who spent all his life with you. Good years and bad. Always in the harness, carrying a double load. Dad, I got plenty of reasons to be riled. I don't recollect the beef ever being barbecued in my honor. Son, I expect you wouldn't be human if a thing like that didn't stick in your craw. Can't blame you a bit. But, Don, it's not a question of loving one son more than the other. A father loves all of his children. You've always been good, all the way through Never given me a minute's worry. Steve has wasted some of the best years of his life. And they can never be recalled or lived over again. And more than that, he's gone against God's will for it. But don't forget, Don, it's, it's like it says in the Bible about the man who left his flock of sheep to go and find the stray one. Steve's home now. And I rejoice and thank God that I have found the lost sheep. Son, you've always been with me. And everything I have is yours. But I can't help feeling glad that Steve's home again. Daddy! Daddy! I fell down and got my clothes all dirty. What do you think Mom will say? Don't worry, son. We'll clean you up. Done. I won't ask you to do anything you're not a mind to. But just think, if it was your own son, would it just come home? Turnout since the Fourth of July party three years ago, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Guess a lot of folks are kind of surprised at seeing me back after all that talk of me setting the world on fire. I sure been a stupid fool. Broke Dad's heart. Sinned against God. Not mentioning all the things I've done to you, too. I'm asking you to forgive me, Don. Let me try to make up for all the damage I've caused. I'm sorry, Don. I'm, I'm really sorry. Seems like there's still some things need fixing. Welcome home, Steve. <laughs> Steve! Don! Come and get it! Well, now, 
now this really is a day for rejoicing. Isn't it? Yes, Dad. Steve's home now, and he's a Christian. We thank God for that. Come, boys.